Hello, everybody. This is the person on the screen that you see that whose image we're going to be working on. It's uh, Sherry Blumel, if I'm saying that right, Sherry. I looked over your website. Amazing, if you don't mind me saying so. You do some fantastic work. And I'll bring in Bridge because we're going to be we're going to start in Bridge because I asked Sherry to send me a raw file. And this is not what the raw file looks like. This is just me playing around. I have several presets that I have. And I'm going to, first of all, reset everything. I work everything out of um, Adobe Camera Raw. And I access Adobe Camera Raw via Bridge. Now, for you guys who access Adobe Camera Raw through Lightroom, I think that's wonderful. It's kind of a matter of whatever you get used to. But a lot of times people say, I work files in Lightroom. But the reality is, if you're working RAW files, you are working RAW files through Adobe Camera Raw. You just access Adobe Camera Raw via Lightroom, which to me is a very clunky way to access it. Um, maybe, again, it's just what you get used to. But I access Adobe Camera Raw through Bridge. And I'm going to show you how I do it. I have a bunch of presets. First, I'm a reset. And what you're looking at this image here is just reset. It's basically what it looks like straight off the camera. And again, Sherry, if you don't mind me saying, fantastic image. Thank you again for sending it to me. It is most impressive. Now I have all sorts of defaults um, and standard um, favorites that I have. I have tons of, of presets, but I just put up several favorites right here that I use a lot. And I'm gonna click this default one first of all, is the one that I use a whole lot when doing portraits. Okay. Now, if you're looking at it, and I'm not sure how the color's re rendering via this screen capture, but it, it's blue right now. And that's probably because this was not photographed with the exact camera that I use. And my, my um, settings are set for my camera. So, of course, you would need to have your presets ready to go for your camera. So, one of the first things I'm going to do is I'm going to click around to see if I can't get a good color. And I assume this is a black or a dark gray background. So I'm going to click on it. And that gets me a whole lot closer. But now it's a kind of yellow. So I'm going to click around various places. And right about in there, it kind of appears now to me to start looking good. I'll change the temperatures as very slightly, adding just a tad bit of blue to uh, make it less yellow. I'm also going to take out just a little bit of magenta because it pumped it up full of magenta. Now, the next thing I always like to do whenever I'm doing these types of images, especially somebody else's, and I'm not familiar with what you did and how you did, did things, is I'll go into this color mixer, and there's several things I know. Like, for example, I know there should be no green in skin. So I take out all the green. Now, of course, if they got a green dress on, you can't do this. But since this girl has a black dress, this is pretty easy. I also take out blue because I know there's no blue in this image either. So if you notice, that cleaned up some of the background and some of the hues and crazy things. Um, in this one, I, I know from playing with it before I started talking to y'all that there's no purples. And there's only a slight bit of magenta, so I'm going to take that down just a little bit because I don't want to freak that out too much. Now, you do not want to mess with the yellows and the oranges and the reds because that is what makes up skin tone. Okay, so once you get to this point, once you got the color right, then I like to start playing with the exposure. And it looks like to me if we pumped up the black a little bit and make it a little bit more punchy, uh, the white, take that down just a hair, take the highlights down just a little bit, shadows maybe right about in there. Uh, clarity, yeah, that was a little strong. Pull that back just a little bit. And then one other thing that I always like to do is vignette. Now, I put a little bit of vignette in here, but I'm going to increase the vignette. Because you got some kind of little flare going on in this upper left-hand corner. So if I vignette it, it kind of takes that out. It makes for less work later in Photoshop. Okay, and I'm going to click Done. So at this point, this image has been prepped, as far as I'm concerned, for raw conversion. So what I do is inside Bridge, I then go to Tools, Photoshop, Image Processor. Now when I do that, uh, it gives me the little Photoshop message. What is that crazy thing on the screen? All right, so when I go to this, it gives me this Image Processor, 
and um, it allows me to one select an image to process uh, process file from bridge only one yes that's what I want to do number two save in same location number three I want to save it as a JPEG quality 12 uh, convert to sRGB I do not want to do any resizing and then I want to run this action KV workflow portraiture first run and what that action does is it runs portraiture for me okay as at like a little preset setting so it puts just a slight amount of softening into the skin let's get rid of some of this crazy stuff on the screen alright so once that is done you click the go button and it converts it into a JPEG right here so we're gonna open up this JPEG which has already been converted so what you're still looking at is a raw file straight off of the camera now I, I get bored real easy so one of the first things I like to do is the most important thing that is the face so I like to zoom real tight in the face specifically tight into the eyes and anything and everything that I want done to the eyes I start doing so like that crazy catch light in the black area of the eyeball I don't want that okay so I'm gonna kinda go in with my black paintbrush and I'm gonna paint out that little bit of black right there now I like this catch light that's nice and this catch light which is a product of either a fill or maybe a reflector it's a little strong for my taste so what I do is I'm gonna go with my uh, not the healing brush but the, not not the clone but yeah healing tool and hold down your option and I'm gonna just kinda touch in here and soften that right out of there just like that do the same thing with the other side that's why I kinda have both eyeballs on the screen at the same time so that I can kinda see what's going on all together now I might have to actually do a little cloning uh, let's clone it about 60 percent to get it right right there Okay, now got a nice catch light and this girl has that awesome ring around the dark color the outside color part of her eye but I like to pronounce that so I'm gonna use my uh, dodge tool mid tones exposure 50 I'm gonna take protected tones off and then a nice brush about this big make sure that that catch light is a nice size this catch light is a nice size then add a little swoosh to the opposite side of the catch light making that even brighter now while I'm in this position I'm gonna take and select a brush that's about the same size as the dark part of her eye maybe just a little bit smaller hold down my alt or option key and I and that turns it into the burn tool that saves time and so that gets the eyes looking pretty good I don't like to mess too much with the white part of the eyes because it can get real freaky real fast so next I'll go back to my healing brush and I'll start working my way out from the eyes if I see any sort of blemish or anything that bothers me lines underneath the eyes anything like that I'm gonna go in I'm gonna take all these things out so like I said I get bored with this I've done this so many times I get bored with it real easy so that's why I like to work on the things that are most important first before I run out of steam so now I'm gonna start taking out that little that little line in her forehead these extra little bumps all these kinds of little things and just do an overall cleanup of all these little areas in and around the eyeball this little shines kinda bugging me just take that down a little bit whatever these little bumps and marks are now again if this was my client we would have had a little conversation about what bumps they like and what bumps they don't like okay on their face because like that might have what I just took off right there that might have been a mole that she just loves or like this mole she like oh I love that mole please don't take that mole okay hey no problem then again they, they may not like their mole they might love the fact that you can take it off so like I said we would have a little conversation just to make sure everybody's in their happy place now the whole time I'm doing this me and the clock right here I don't know if you can see the clock it's having a little war we're watching I'm watching that sucker because cannot sit here and retouch images for 20 minutes 
You know, you just can't do it. That's not practical. So you got to kind of do stuff that's that's practical. So face is important. I like to take my time on the face, but after that, we start speeding up. Neck bump, neck neck bumps, all that kind of stuff I like to fix. Now, when you start messing with hair, which is again where I'm heading next, we'll be going out further and further, you'll see from the eyeballs. You got to be careful cuz with hair you can mess up hair in a heartbeat. You can make it look like she's got like a little helmet on her head. If you take every one of these little wispy things away, it, it gets real strange real fast. Out here on the edges, okay, you know, I like to take a few of these things out, but I don't want to get too radical and too crazy about it because I don't want it to look fake. Now up in here, this is going to get crazy. So. I'm just going to take these little wispies out, and I'm going to show you how I handle that in a second. Let me just continue in in this general area. Like that, taking all these little wispies out. And now some of this, I'm just going to lighten it a little bit, and I'll show you how to do that next. Okay, very good. Let's back off a little bit. Get our clone tool. Nice size brush. Drop it down to, oh, 30%-ish. Okay, and we're just going to kind of rub in here. And what that does, it just lightens this stuff. Again, we're going to mess with this bump here in a second, but I'm going to lighten it for now. And then we're going to take out that. Sampling various places as I go. We're just taking lightening as we go. Okay, so one more time over here. Just a little bit more lightening. Good. Now this bump, you got to really kind of be careful because, again, you can make it look fake. So I'm going to go back up to 100% and I'm going to take out this. But then to make it look real and even, I'm going to select this area and then open up Liquify, which is Shift-Command-X. Then I'm going to use this little tool right here. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven down. But this is the secret. Make sure your pressure is nice and low, like about 10. And then every when you rub to the left, it pushes in. When you rub to the right, it pulls out, see? And so you can go in some of these little bump, like that bump caused by her crown. You can just push that little bump right in. Okay, so I like the way that looks. Click OK. Very good. Deselect. But now, sometimes when you select and you get a little radical, it leaves a little white thing like that, but that's no problem. You can get rid of that fast with your healing brush just like that. And nobody even knows it was actually there. All right, backing up again, getting a little bit further out. Now, this beautiful young lady, you know, again, liquefy. Everybody loves inside liquefy if you slim them up just a little bit. So I will take on the face shape, jaw, I will suck in that jaw, just a hair, if you notice, only minus 16. And then the whole face width, just a tad bit, I went to 22. Then I use my, my warp tool, just the first one at the top, and I'll reshape little weird bumps, like that little shape, that little bump right there. Okay, just to slim it up. Sometimes I go into the nose and the lips and that stuff, but in this case, she's just too pretty to do any of that kind of stuff. But I will soften up, for example, some of these dress bumps like that. Okay, and this little dress bump right there. All right, pretty much her hands looking good, her arms, all this looking fantastic. Very good. Okay, liquefy, done. All right, so again, like I said, beautiful image. Um, I want to force the viewer into the face, so I'm going to take and go to my uh, burn tool, probably around 50-ish percent in mid-tones. Nice big brush, and I'm going to make sure that that area up here in the left-hand corner that was flaring, that's not there. All in here is nice and dark, bringing you right into the face. I might actually go into the highlight mode, drop my pressure down to about, exposure down to about 30%, and rub. Even though this is not highlights I'm rubbing, it takes it down just a little bit and blends it to where, again, that forces you into the face. Now, I have an action that I've saved 
from a million years ago called Perfect Soft. And basically it's portraiture with a whole few steps. So I'm just gonna run that step now. And what it does, first of all, is it runs portraiture and stops and allows me to select just the skin. So I'm gonna select skin, then okay, it runs it, stops again, and it asks me to fade in how much do I want. I want plenty or I want none. Well, in this young lady, I want plenty of, of portraiture. So I cranked it up. Okay. Then it runs a, another action. Part of the action is it runs another action that adds warmth to the image. Now, the question is how much warmth? Do I want a lot of warmth? No, that's weird looking. Do I want no, no warmth? No, that looks blue. So I'm just going to add just a little bit of warmth just to give her a little bit of a tan feel, 23%. Click OK. Next, what it does, it does is it runs another action. This adds a little bit of contrast. So again, how much contrast? No, that's weird looking. None? Now I could use just a little bit, maybe around 10, 12%. OK, then it stops on levels. And here's my, my famous levels trick that I love so much, is you hold down your Alt or Option key before doing a levels adjustment. And what happens is, is it shows you graphically exactly which pixels are being affected. Now you don't want to get into the face. Like right here, man, you are affecting too much of the face. So you just kind of get in here a little bit, left, left, and then right there, you start seeing other pixels come in, you want to stop right there. Then on the right side slider, when you start seeing red in the face, like right there, boom, that's, per that's enough. Click OK, and you have a perfect levels adjustment. So now at this point, I think this image is looking really nice. I mean, it was looking nice right out the camera. Again, fantastic image, Sherry. But there's always something you can do in Photoshop to make it better. This little, you know, now at this point, I like to get picky. So like, like this little piece of hair right here, that kind of bugs me. You know how that hair gets a little off. So I'll take my healing brush and I'll see if I can't kind of give it a little direction. You know, like that, just to calm it. I don't know what that little white speck is in her hair. Some of these little wispies are starting to really get under my skin. That's looking natural, okay? Now, she looks like she has hair coloring, and, and in here, it doesn't match perfectly. So a little trick to fix that would be to take your paintbrush, move it from normal mode into color, and reduce the opacity to around, I don't know, 20, 30. Get you a brush, and then you just sample, hold down your Alt or, Alt or Option key, and sample the color you want. Now you're going to paint only in color mode. So wherever you paint, it's going to paint that color. So now I can paint in a little bit of coloring into this part of her hair where there was no coloring, which better matches what it was before, okay? Let's uh, make sure I have a nice soft edge brush for this area. And again, I'm, I'm only doing it at 30%. So, you know, the more you wipe, the more it adds. And so that's what you can do in some of these areas where that hair coloring did not take so well. All right, very good. And you know, by adding those little strokes like that, it makes it more realistic looking. Down here, you know, I like the fact that it's darker here than here. So, But if it bothers you, you could add, you know, you could follow the hairline like this, adding a little bit of reddish tint into those areas, you know, making sure you don't accidentally rub her skin with that coloring. You know, that would just be strange looking. So there, you're starting to have a pretty cool image or, or cooler cooler than it was, As again, I can't say enough good about this image. It really is fantastic. So at this point, I would say, yep, I'm done. So I would go file, save, okay, and, and call it. I hope you all enjoyed this. I hope others want to send me some images. Send me images. I'll, I'll work your image, images live for YouTube, and we'll have some fun with this. I'd love your feedback. Take care. Have a great day.